Hi, Maxi Jazz. Hi, Laura. You just came off stage. How do you feel? Um, I'm buzzing, actually. It was a really, really, really nice gig. Everybody was like lovely and friendly and sweet and pleasant and danced a lot. <laughs> yeah, the crowd was really vibing you. Do you do you always get that vibe? Uh, no, always, to be honest with you. Sometimes um, you can play your music and be the best will in the world. If you're playing funky music to a techno crowd, they're going to be really like. So yeah, it was very nice. You have a lot of different genres in your sets. Do you always do that? Yeah, um, I, I grew up with, with DJs that actually the first warehouse parties were in sort of 1983-84. And you would like come out of your normal regular club and see these dodgy looking guys handing out these really incredible flyers, right? With a little map on the back. And you'd be like, yeah, come on. And we jump in the car and you drive to the to the venue. And then you go into this huge kind of old hangar or warehouse and stuff with a massive, massive sound system in it. And everything would get played, right? Funk, James Brown, the latest hip hop, old school hip hop, reggae, new reggae, old, plus, you know, everything, everything got played. And that's kind of what I, I grew up with. It's just like, if it's funky, you play it. It could be rock music, it doesn't matter. If it's funky and people go like, it's worth playing. And that's that's what I grew up with. The whole thing with house music kind of went by me a little bit, whereby you've got DJ saying, well, I only play house music. And what's more, I only play one type of house music. What? That's, like, that's, that's kind of weird for me. It's like, house is great, reggae is great, funk is great, rock is great, you know, so why not? Play anything. So do you miss that, those those underground parties? I do, but um, they're still out there. You have to look for them. <laughs> but and you're bringing them back just by, by using vinyls. You're only using vinyls. That's special these days. Yeah, it's true. I, but I have to say that it's still um, technology in that I use Serato, which is they give you two vinyls. But they, the, the vinyl has nothing on it. It's like an empty record. And they give you a scratch box. You plug your decks into the scratch box and then back into the mixer. And the scratch box turns your needles from receivers. Generally, you put the needle on the record. It lifts the music off the record, right? But with Serato, it plays the music from your laptop onto your record. Your record has nothing on it at all. It's playing it onto the record. So all of your songs are on your laptop there. You just assign it to that deck and it will play the record. On, but all the scratching and the mixing and the pullbacks and stuff. Easy, brother. <laughs> um, you're still able to do. But the incredible thing is that if I wanted to take 3,000 actual vinyl records into a dance, I'd have crates going all the way back there and they're really heavy and I've got it all on a laptop. So that kind of um, DJ technology is the best thing to happen to DJs since Dex. And um, it also means that certain of those records that I like to play, which are really valuable, you know, certain records I've got in my house, it took me 20 and 30 years to find them. And if I lose them, if I damage them, if I spill beer on them, or if somebody steals them, I'm not getting them again. So the idea that they're sitting in my house safe while I've got in my laptop all of the music that I have, oh, it's just the best, best thing. And like I said, I can still do all that stuff that I learned to do when I was a young man on vinyl. Because you are a collector, right? You have oh, yeah, all these sure. kinds of vinyls. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. I I'm still go to towns and if I've got two hours, I go down to the concierge in the hotel and say, Where's the funky part of town, right? Where they sell the trainers and the, and the skateboard stuff and the records. And they go, oh, here's, you need to go here. Yeah, I just get a cab straight there. Because do you Sneakers only... and records. <laughs> Sneakers and records. You can live with that. That's my life. So do you only spin stuff that you have at your house or do you also have things on your laptop that you don't have on actual records? I've got a few things, actually, that I'm not a big... Okay, all my life, if I needed to go, if I needed to, to, to buy music, if I needed that piece of music in my house, I had to leave the house and find a record shop and go and buy it. And sometimes you go to the first record shop and they've sold out. And you might have to go five, six before you find it. And it was, it, it kind of made it 
even more special. There are certain, all right, the Beastie Boys' first record. I drove for hours on the day it came. I drove from record to, I drove all around London. And after, I think about three, four hours, I managed to find a record shop with one copy left it. I managed to buy and bring home. And that was, that was, it was really exciting. When there was a hot record out there, we're DJs, right? We, we need this record, right? So you're straight out there. And I'm like, Max, I'm sorry, they're all gone. I'm like, no way! <laughs> and so, okay, you go to the next shop and the next and the next. But it, you had to do it. And it was part of the excitement of, of a new hot record. You know, you didn't just go, doo -doo 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 -doo. boom. Thank you, there it is. And plus, I've still got that Beastie Boys record in my collect. I can pull it out at any time, pull the record out, stick it on there, and it still plays. I don't have many CDs that are still playing after the thick end of 30 years, right? But a vinyl record, you play that 100 years from now, you might have a few. But other than that, it's perfect. Is that now your favorite record? Through all that, through all that effort, is that now your favorite record? Uh, I don't have a favorite record. I swear, if <laughs> if I was forced to name a favorite record on pain of death, if you had to go to a deserted probably, island, no, they probably have only to just one. kill me because I could. <laughs> I can't think of one. Re no, not a single one. Not a single one. Did you have a feeling? Did you say that's my life on a record? Maybe it's your own record. Possibly, it can be your own record. Possibly, possibly Purple Haze. I think it's a good choice. Yeah, I, I think if uh, I had to live my life and only listen to one record for the rest of my life, that would work for me. Yeah, Purple Haze yeah. would be the title song of your life. <laughs> kind of. One of, yeah, one of. <laughs> one of. Yeah. And if you had to choose between your own songs? It's harder if you have to listen to that, maybe, for the rest of your life. The new album um, that we made with my new band, um, mm -hmm. The E-Type Boys, I like every single track on I mean, I've never made an album ever that I loved every single track, except this one. And I guess maybe the first track, which is called Change Our Destiny, I love that song. And the last track, Like a Samurai. So if I had to go to a desert island, I'm not sure if I could choose between those two. Oh, mind you, Homesick Blues is a killer too, yeah. So is this the record that you're most proud of ever making ever. then? Yeah, it's better ever. than the Faithless ever. stuff. Ever. Well, with Faithless it was, it was three, four of us. Four of us at the beginning and then three. And it was um, one of those wonderful things where you meet people that you just get on with musically. And you're able in that case to just carry on and do stuff. And then people really like it for whatever reason. And so you keep on doing it and it's, it's wonderful. But on another level, I've been a rapper for over 30 years. Uh, hip hop music is what got me into the music business in the first place. I love hip hop and the hip hop culture. But if you'd have asked me 10 years ago, Maxi, can you see yourself writing songs on guitar and fronting your own band, playing electric guitar on stage, your own songs and singing, I'd have been like, yeah. <laughs> You're joking. Right. I mean, I mean, really. Yeah. So the fact that that's actually what's happening in my life right now is what is happening in my life right now is unbelievable to me. And um, I've got these eight guys and one girl, seven guys and one girl who backed me up and they love playing my music. Who knew? They love playing my songs and I love playing with them. And it reminds me of being in my very first band at school. I mean, honestly, that's exactly what it's like. <laughs> wow, this is just great. It's the just... excitement and everything. Everything's I've new. I've never done this before. I used to play like one song with Faithless, um, uh, Fatty Boo, and Crazy Bulldogs, and they're reggae songs, and it's two two chords. So I sing and learning to sing and play was hard, but <laughs> I I do that two chords singing no problem. But most of my songs have got like 18 chords in them. Ask me why I don't know why it's just how it comes out of me. So playing quite complicated guitar parts and singing 
with a band and my songs, it's just like, I would never have believed it. Even maybe four years, five years ago. I'd like, you know. So you're really still evolving then? Yeah. yeah. So who knows where you are in five more years? That's exactly what I say. It's just like, what else is in here? Yeah. I have no It's idea. It's exciting you know. for us as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would have... I would have been making a hip hop album as a, as a natural progression from right, leaving Faithless. The next thing would have been to make a rap album. It would have been very jazzy and very musical, but it would have been hip hop. It would have been rhymes over beats. And then suddenly I realized I've got all of these songs that I've written on. Why not give that a go, Maxi? I'm like, why not? And now here we are, and I'm like, I am so excited. I can't tell you, it's very exciting. Because everything you do becomes iconic. With Faithless, you are icons now. Everyone knows degree, your songs, every degree, generation. Yeah, to a degree, that's true, but, but, and it's a big but. The music that I'm making now is so different mm. from what Faithless is and are. It's like starting again. And honestly, if you go to a music promoter and say, okay, I'm Maxi Jazz, remember Maxi Jazz from Faithless? Right, I've got a new band and we're playing like rock music, kind of slash funk, kind of slash blues, kind of slash soul and reggae. They'd be like... What? <laughs> well, yeah, they're not... Given that they know who you are, yeah. they're still not convinced that you can necessarily fill their auditorium yeah. enough to, for them to pay you anything like, anything like serious money. So... It's very tough, and there's a lot of new music out there. So the E-Type boys have to prove themselves along with everybody else. You know, it's, there's a lot of stuff out there for people to check out. And it, uh, for me, it's a question of bloody-mindedness. If you can stay the course, you'll make it. Yeah, but gigs like tonight, where you can play every genre at the same set, that's, that's uplifting them. It's Honestly, promising. when you hear Simple Not Easy, my, my first album, mm. it's exactly the same. There's all kinds of genres in there. There's like, there'll be like three genres in one song. <laughs> I mean it, I'm serious. There'll be a bit of jazz, a bit of rock and a bit of funk, and maybe a bit of bossa nova in the one tune. That's, that's kind of how it comes out. I, I, I can't control it, that's how it comes out of me. So.